If I want to test the DC performance of my amplifier, I need a reliable source of a pretty small voltage, a few millivolts. And I'll do that by connecting my potentiometer here to a high voltage, 5 volts, through a very large resistor, in this case 2 megohms, and the other side to ground. Then the pin in the middle will give me a small voltage that's adjustable from 0 if I've got the potentiometer set to a resistance of zero. I can make a similar voltage divider with the pot, the variable part of it, in between two 2 mega ohm resistors. So the result is that the voltages on the pot will be both around 2.5 volts, but they'll be very slightly different from each other. As I adjust this pot, it goes from zero. As I go all the way around the potentiometer, it gets up to about 12 millivolts, so a very small voltage difference on these blue and green wires that are feeding into the amplifier input. To connect the amplifier, first I make sure that there's no power going to the circuit so I don't fry anything along the way. Then I'll make a connection between the plus 5 trace over here and pin 2 and pin 1 on the amplifier chip to supply 5 volt power to drive the system. A ground connected to pin 3 on the chip provides a return path for the power that's being supplied. These are pins 1, 2, 3, so on up to 8, and that's 9, 10, 11, pin 12 that I've also got connected to ground. It provides a reference zero volt signal to the chip for the signals. Pin 5 provides an amplifier reference, and I know by looking at the data sheet that for this single sided common ground application, it should also be connected directly to ground. The output pins 10 and 11 are joined together as in the diagram, and from the output, there's a 10K re load resistor connecting them to ground to allow some current to flow. The output's also connected to this blue wire, which at the moment isn't connected to anything, but we're going to use our voltmeter to measure what that output looks like. Finally, I've connected this green, blue, black color-coded resistor, so that's a 56-ohm resistor between pins 8 and 9, and that will determine the gain that I get from the INA125 instrumentation amplifier. I've done almost all of my wiring here with little short lengths of hookup wire that I've stripped the ends off and plugged into the sockets. That makes for a neater board with less of this spaghetti up here. It makes it easier to see. But there's no electrical reason why you couldn't use these jumper cables to jump all of those connections and, uh, and get it done a little more quickly. The difference in voltage here remains very similar, a few millivolts, but it's really important that it's up around the two and a half millivolt, or sorry, two and a half volt actual level, because an obscure little passage on the data sheet says that the absolute voltage values of the inputs must be more than one volt above the V negative input on the amplifier, which in this case is just ground voltage or zero volts. So if the inputs are close to ground, then the amplifier won't work. This messed me up. With a zero millivolt input, the output from the amplifier is much higher, about 80 millivolts. So the zero isn't actually working out right. But if I start adjusting that up just a little bit, I start seeing the voltage going up. It gets right off the millivolt scale. So if I go up two notches, I've increased the input voltage, and I'm now getting an output voltage of 320 millivolts, about a third of a volt. As I increase that, I see a linear increase in the output based on what the input was. And eventually I get up to an output of about 4.1 volts and for increasing input voltage it doesn't go any higher. That's because the biggest output this amplifier can generate is about 0.9 volts 
less than the input voltage, the supply voltage, which is 5 volts. So the highest it can go is about 4.1 for the output over here. If I dial that back down, eventually I get down to the range where I'm getting smaller voltage outputs. An output of 1.9 volts roughly corresponds to an input there we go about 1.78 millivolts so we're seeing a, a very large increase a very large gain which is what we'd expect with this small resistance value here